Hello everyone, I am Tacit and today I'm going to be going over the new Gems of War Mythic of the Iron Hawk. It is available in the Glory Gem Guild and VIP chest for this week only and then it'll be in the drop table with everything else. We're going to be going over a key opening, we're going to be going over a bunch of teams and then kind of just getting first impressions for what this thing can do. So as far as this troop, it is basically like Gorgotha as far as uh, what it can do. Uh, just with a little bit difference as far as how you would actually end up utilizing it. Uh, one of the biggest difference, of course, is that it has a 25 mana cost instead of a uh, 15. Uh, one thing to note is that this thing actually was nerfed before it was brought into the game. It was originally going to be a 24 mana cost, and it was raised to 25, and it was originally going to create 20 Doom Skulls, but it was lowered down to 12. However, the amount of explosions it has is completely left un uh, unchanged, and it's pretty much about how many a Gorgotha would normally do. And on top of the Doom Skulls, you're basically going to be able to uh, board clear every single time. It doesn't have cleanse, however, it does have impervious, so you don't have to worry about any uh, kind of uh, stats effects for the most part. Uh, however, one thing that you are going to need to worry about is skull damage. It does not have any skull reduction whatsoever, meaning unlike Gorgotha, where you almost always use it in first slot, this is more of a second or third slot, and depending on your team, possibly even fourth slot, though generally second or third is where you're going to be putting your Iron Hawk. His unique trait is that it gets to deal uh, five damage to all enemies whenever an ally uh, casts a spell, so this can end up stacking up quite a bit of damage. This is also particularly good for a explode spam team since you don't necessarily need to hit an extra turn to still be able to get its damage. Something like Kraken, of course, would be uh, very dependent on hitting that extra turn in order for it to actually do that damage. However, with this thing, as long as you do a cast, uh, you'll still be able to get the damage. And given that you're likely to use this with at least one other exploder in most instances, either the mech weapon, a leprechaun, or something else for synergy purposes, uh, it's going to get quite a bit of value from being able to do that over time. Obviously, that has diminishing returns the higher the stats go and uh, later into the game. However, in early game, mid game, that can definitely stack up to be uh, quite a bit of damage just passively as you're already hitting for a very uh, high base amount of damage. A lot of his values are very uh, static so uh, it's more of an early game kind of mid game mythic. Uh, it can be usable in end game however it's probably not as good as uh, some other options that do exist simply because uh, it's two main uh, damage options. While it's mostly a man accumulator it's two main damage options don't scale at all. The five damage per cast isn't going to scale any higher and the 60 damage doesn't scale any higher unless you hunters mark them in which case it does 120. However, that's the max it's really going to be able to get unless there's even more skulls on the board. Uh, overall, it's a slightly above average mythic that could have been a lot better if they didn't nerf it before it came out. Uh, but yeah, let's go see what this thing can do. Also, it counts as a mech construct, uh, which is somewhat uh, relevant. I believe it is one of the only, if not the only, uh, construct mythics in the game. So a little bit of synergy there, though I didn't end up uh, utilizing any teams with that as there is currently no construct uh, hero class and their synergies for it just aren't as good. So the previous mythic, for any of you that know, when we hit like zero gem keys, took us three. 3,100 gem keys. It was absolutely brutal. If I'm not mistaken, we opened it during the New Year's stream. Um, yeah, because it would have been January, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that was a while ago. But anyways, let's try again. Hopefully it does not take us anywhere near that many keys. I would sure hope not. Uh, hopefully we can get it done within about a thousand, which is generally about how many it takes if you're going to be doing it through uh, gem keys. Of course, Glory, Gem Guild, or VIP keys, you can all get it from. I just happened to start with gem keys, and that's exactly what you'll want to see. Wasn't keeping track exactly, but I believe that was 200, 150, 200, we could check after the fact. It was summers around there. It was definitely not 3,100, so that makes up for how bad we did on last Mythic, at least. But uh, there it is. Uh, there's some justification to consider getting a second one. I probably wouldn't go out of your way for it, but... Um, it technically wouldn't be horrible with two, but I I'd probably just stick with one. Anyways, let's go get this thing upgraded and uh, go use it. See what this thing can uh, actually end up doing. So uh, let's go to upgradable. We'll probably actually let's just type in iron. Pretty sure just typing an iron here would be the easiest way to get to this thing. So give it that to mythic. Obviously, we get quite a bit of value just from using our orbs on it. I am going to use three smaller oranges just so we don't have to craft into a bigger one later for when we need it for uh, crafting uh, boss rarity troops. And then we'll just use one big green just so we don't have to spam click a billion times. And uh, there we go. And make sure never to use the power orb <laughs> whenever you get them. That was actually from a... Um, from a uh, major orb when we uh, just randomly got it. Very, very lucky. Hopefully we see them again. 1% um, chance as of the uh, couple patches ago. Uh, very rare, but it does still happen. Anyways, let's go slot Ironhawk into all these teams and go see what this thing can do. Obviously, we already have some uh, teams built up. Uh, and uh, we'll be messing around with a little bit more of them uh, throughout the uh, weekend. But uh, let's see what we could do with first impressions and uh, let's go straight into PvP. Oh, also, he gives a star to Adana. Unfortunately, it's not a 20th star, but it is a star nonetheless, right? You can't go to 20 yet. 
No, unfortunately not. But uh, one more trip to Adana and we'll get, I believe, an extra armor. Also, as that just mentioned, we do have a new faction. We'll be going over that on stream probably about an hour after this uh, video goes up. Hopefully around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Summer's around there. But anyways, we'll be going over that in a bit. But for now, let's go and uh, go over this mythic. So uh, I have three teams here. One centered around a bunch of mana accumulation. One centers around Hunter's Mark. And one is a super cheap team that uh, you could basically build um, pretty easily. So unfortunately, we're up against the Zukov team. I almost want to switch to a different team uh, for showing this off. But uh, we'll try it out. So this first team that we're going to be doing, uh, it's actually pure mech. Obviously, um, given that it is a mech and you can half mana start all mechs with the mech in this hero class, you gain quite a bit of value from um, synergizing it with other mechs. So that's basically what we're doing with this very first team. Uh, it also utilizes that new weapon we got last week. Uh, and up mentioning that quite a bit last week to go get this weapon because it might be pretty good with this uh, mythic and this is basically what you would use it for ends up applying a bunch of status effects to your entire team and you have this for a bunch of damage as you can see it ends up exploding all of that doing about 60 damage to first slot and getting pretty good value and uh, we can end up doing this for various board control it actually destroys the gem so we can actually gain mana specifically for it however i'm going to go for another explosion here and just kind of get that going over and over again kind of spam that between the uh, mythic and uh, as you can see that just hit for almost 800 damage and we kind of just keep exploding we keep sta uh, stacking stats effects every single time we cast that we do five damage to all enemies as well we have smash a bot which uh if he wouldn't die <laughs> would be able to also do damage based on its armor. That's very unfortunate that I died immediately before we could get resummon. Obviously, ideally, what you want to do there is resummon with your hero in order to get additional mechs, as every single time you cast it, you would gain uh, more mechs onto your team. But unfortunately, it dies out. However, one nice thing here is, of course, Web Spinner does do triple damage to anything that can be webbed or poisoned. However, we have Impervious, so he actually cannot web or poison us. Oh, I have minus one on yellow right now. Whoops. <laughs> Mistakes have been made. That one time we need that little bit of yellow mana, and it backfires. Also, speaking of backfire, would you like to not live with one HP? That'd be great. So we'll kill that out. Uh, we'll go for another one, which should be able to kill it out. Generally, you're going to be hitting for at least 60 damage every single time you do that, which is pretty consistent since it's going to be clearing out uh, essentially the entire board. So you can get quite a bit of value from there. We'll go destroy all the brown. The Exus goes into it. He's going to get a Weaver here. It's luckily not enough. The web also doesn't go into our thing because um, we have Impervious, of course. So uh, we're kind of immune to it. And as you can see, it kind of ends up killing it out. Um, Pervy is actually coming into play quite a bit this battle, uh, surprisingly. Uh, it does destroy all gems, so we actually still get the full amount of mana accumulation from casting this. Oh, that's funny. We actually killed it with the five damage. <laughs> well, that works. That actually, that's actually interesting. So it applies the five damage prior to your cast. This is actually pretty relevant because if your cast was to do, let's say, like a, a skull spam or something, and you actually killed it with the five damage, your skull spam would go on to the next troop. It wouldn't go on to the troop that just died because you killed it prior with the five damage. Uh, that's very rarely going to come into play, but do keep that in mind. Is that's actually pretty beneficial that it applies prior uh, to the actual cast. Uh, so it does the five damage up front, and then it does whatever your cast is. So if they're within five damage for kill range, uh, you can end up utilizing that. So that's kind of interesting. We kind of did that there, though. Not really, because we weren't doing it with Skull Spam. However, this one does do it with a Skull Spam. So this is just Karandera. Karandera, uh, even if you're playing free-to-play, has been in Soul Forge. So it is accessible to uh, everyone at least at least, uh, at least once at this point. Uh, it has a Curse option. Uh, this is going to be centered around Hunter's Mark. So basically, we have Karandera for Curse. Hero does Hunter's Mark. There's a couple different heroes that could do it. We're doing it with Arch. Uh, since it works pretty good in first slot as well. And uh, basically we're doing that going and having Skull Spam, having Iron Hawk. Uh, Iron Hawk plus Karandera works pretty good since they have no mana color overlap. You could theoretically do the Leprechaun in front of the Karandera, but I'm trying it the other way around to see if we could burst damage it. I have a feeling that Iron Hawk, once it gets going, will kind of already be enough mana, so we should hopefully be good to go. And that's kind of the premise that we're going with here. And based on the previous battle, it does seem like it will. So basically what we do here is go straight for that Mountain Crusher. Uh, we do have a li uh, we do have uh, mana here. I'm not sure if we have alignment. Uh, we'll find out in a second. doesn't look like we do. It has yellow to uh, Doom Skull, which... Uh, of course, we'd uh, kind of want that to be aligned before we go for it, ideally. Um, so as you can see here, we have Hunter's Mark. Uh, one interesting thing about Hunter's Mark is it does stack um, Exploded Skulls. So if you don't know, uh, Exploded Skulls do... Um additional damage to Hunter's Mark. So right here, we're about to explode about, um, like, what, about 65 damage or so, maybe a little bit higher. So this is about to do about 130 damage or so. So as you can see, it's 116. So it does get doubled from the uh, Hunter's Mark. So uh, do be mindful of that. It uh, can end up stacking a decent amount of damage that way. And uh, that applies to all exploded, not just off of uh, the thing, of course. Oh, unfortunately, it just killed our last slot right there. Uh, we still don't have alignment on this. 
I don't think we cast a Karen Dare a single time. However, the curse did come into play. Uh, Megavor does have Impervious, even though it kind of just died, and I don't really get to show it. <laughs> but he does have Impervious, so uh, we generally, normally wouldn't be able to Hunter's Mark it. But because we had Karen Dare for the curse, and then follow it up with the uh, Hunter's Mark off of uh, Hero's uh, first talent, uh, a couple different heroes that have it, we're just using Archer for it, uh, we were able to get Hunter's Mark on it, which allows us to do additional uh, damage right here. We just go for the Karen Dare, poke it, and it is super ridiculously dead. But uh, there we go. And yeah, ends up working out pretty nicely. And that's basically the Hunter's Mark build. Obviously, if you do go Hunter's Mark, um, you can't go half mana start on it. However, um, you can use another mana cum accumulator like Leprechaun or something similar in order to try to get that initial mana uh, for it and uh, go from there. Anyways, last but not least, we have the very cheap team. So this uses the weapon that came out last Friday. Uh, combined with two bomb bots, which are literally just commons, and an Iron Hawk. Well, obviously the Iron Hawk isn't cheap, but these are Iron Hawk teams after all. So um, yeah, that's basically as cheap as you could really get. Uh, the weapon ends up replacing out the bomb bots, and uh, the Iron Hawk just does its normal thing. And it's pretty much the whole premise. You just rush up the uh, bomb bots, they go and destroy themselves. The weapon then replaces them with additional mechs, and you kind of just win from there. And that's basically the premise. So right here, we'll go for a bomb bot into bomb bot. Ideally, he doesn't win by then. <laughs> Which he might if he does something scary. Uh, looks like he's going to be fine. He's not doing anything too bad yet. So we'll just do this. We'll do it again. Unfortunately, he does have double submerge, which is being very annoying. But we can go for that. Get a bunch of damage onto his first slot. We can do it again. Obviously, he has a 100% chance to go do a 25% chance to do his uh, revive. And we won. <laughs> also, it looks like we kind of glitched them out. They were kind of to the side there. And uh, while I didn't get to show it a single time, that weapon does resummon mechs. So when you uh, lose out your team, you can kind of just resummon and go from there. Uh, this team has a pretty quick burst, as you can see. However, uh, if it falls behind, it could fall behind by quite a lot. But um, yeah, that's uh, three teams that you can end up doing with Ironhawk. Overall, definitely an above average mythic, though I really hate that they nerfed it. But uh, it's, it's still usable without it uh, or with the nerf. Um, one mana cost actually doesn't make much of a difference. The main nerf that actually made much of a difference is the Doom Skull creation. Before, it would have been able to hit 200 with Hunter's Mark, whereas now it's only 100, or uh, sorry, only 120 with uh, Hunter's Mark because it's 60. So that's a pretty substantial 80 damage difference when you're using it for its max damage build. I think that's the main reason why they ended up nerfing it for the most part, <laughs> because that actually was quite a bit of damage to be able to do, at least in like a PvP-like uh, stance. Uh, and obviously, in things like Delves and stuff, that's not too particularly high. Definitely not something you would really use in Delves. It's more so a PvP option. If you using this at all it's pretty much just uh, offensive pvp and maybe defensive pvp i'm not quite sure how good the ai is obviously haven't had the chance to test it with ai but if i had to guess generally as with almost everything the ai is probably not the greatest with it however it's not really an ability you can mess up too much however the ai might not get its mana accumulated correctly which will get it mana drained which will make it pointless to even have so in that regard it's probably going to be d uh, bad under ai but if the ai could actually cast it there's no way it could possibly mess up the cast so i guess in that regard it's uh, not too bad. But anyways, guys, that is the new Mythic. Definitely worth at least attempting for. Uh, other than that, we will be going over the new uh, faction on stream. We'll also have a video going over it uh, sometime this weekend. But uh, we'll be have a stream probably up in about an hour from now or about half an hour probably by the time this video gets up or so at well, about uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be going over that for a couple hours and messing with it throughout the weekend at our normal 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time streams. Also, uh, Super Bowl is this uh, Sunday, so I will be streaming our normal Sunday night stream at about noon on uh, Sunday, so do be wary of that. Pretty much the same time that we're doing our stream today will pretty much be the stream for uh, Sunday, since we're going to be doing a little bit earlier, since the Super Bowl is going to be going through the normal time that we would uh, normally stream, so do be mindful of that. And also, uh, one other thing, uh, Iron Guts, that placeholder we were using there, obviously for the Iron Hawk, uh, since they use the same mana, oddly enough, kind of funny, since they both use Iron. Uh, do keep in mind, you do still have three days to get that from the event key drop table uh even though the mythic is currently in it's only in glory gem guild and vip key drop table it is not an event key drop table so you still have three days the rest of today tomorrow and sunday to go and get iron if you're still looking for him so do be mindful of that as that mythic is still around if you also want to get that uh it's definitely a better mythic than this one so if you're using specifically gems it might even be a better idea to try to go for the iron gut rather than trying to go for this mythic because if you were to go for one or the other iron gut is definitely the better option compared to this even though they are both uh good in their own unique way but anyway Anyways, guys, I'll wrap it up for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and best of luck with trying to get the Mythic. Goodbye, everyone!